Is Siren Head real? Is Siren Head an SCP? Who or what is Siren Head? These are some popular questions about the mysterious creature named Siren Head, who was created by Trevor Henderson. Recently, Siren Head has taken the horror community by storm and spilled out further than that. So lots of people are hearing about Siren Head, but don't really know much about him, apart from what they've seen in the games or in other YouTube videos. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some information that might help answer some of your questions about this cryptid. I'll also be creating an artwork using an electric eraser. It's a really fun technique, and I hope you like how it turns out. I'll be reading this information from the wiki, so if you want to check it out for yourself and see future updates, I'll leave a link in the video description so you can give it a look. Some of these facts I've covered before, but a lot of it has been edited since then, and improved, and more has been added. So there's lots more to see here, so I hope you'll enjoy it. So is Siren Head real? Well first, let's talk about the origin, and that really should answer that question for you. Originally, Siren Head was created back in 2018 by the Canadian horror type artist known as Trevor Henderson who is known for making various bizarre creatures over the internet. His other creations include Cartoon Cat, I've done a video on that, you can check it out, Long Horse, also done a video on that, The Man with the Upside Down Face, and a bunch of others. Maybe I'll cover them in the future if you guys are interested. But you really should check him out, he creates some really cool horror artworks on his Instagram, so give him a follow. The first known photo of Siren Head he made was the one featuring Siren Head at a graveyard, in which he wrote a story about. She was on vacation with her husband, and they were scoping out graveyards on the way, as you do, when she saw it. Rising out of the old cemetery, big as an old macabre telephone pole, was this some kind of bizarre art piece the authorities hadn't gotten wise to yet. As she stepped out of the car, the megaphones on its head screeched to life. 9, 18, 1, child, 17, remove, vial. A buzzing, doubled voice screamed random words at her. At this point, it jerked into motion, striding down the hill towards her. Henderson also mentioned that Siren Head is very similar to the famous creepypasta character known as Slenderman, as both of the characters got edited into real life photos, with the story being written regarding them. So there's your answer. Siren Head has been edited into photos. According to Henderson, people all over the world started sending their photos to him, with the intention of having Siren Head or other cryptids made by Henderson to get added to the image. Remember, Trevor Henderson is an artist, and speaking as another artist myself, we don't always draw real things. We make things up or get inspiration from things around us. I won't crush your dreams if you want to believe in Siren Head. Maybe he did see Siren Head and didn't have a camera available at the time, so then he recreated the image using digital means. It's possible. At the end of the day, who really cares if it's real or not? I think it's fun just entertaining the idea that these creatures could exist somewhere out there in the darkness. It's fun to think about that type of thing, at least for me as a horror fan. But with that being said, let's jump into some information about Siren Head. Almost all images of Siren Head are presented in a very similar way to each other featuring Siren Head as a tall, thin, desiccated and dehydrated humanoid with mummified skin and jewel sirens on its head. Henderson has confirmed that Siren Head's sirens have the ability of releasing various sounds out of them, such as conversations, 
white noises and extremely loud sounds which can damage hearing. Siren Head has been presented with differing objects on its head depending on two known photographs. In the first photo, more than two sirens are seen on Siren Head's head, while in the second photo, Siren Head's head is that of a street lamp, which gave Siren Head the nickname Lamp Head. These two photographs verified two theories. Siren Head has the ability to change its appearance in order to fit with the world, or that a subspecies of Siren Head exists. Interestingly enough, the only metallic piece of Siren Head are the two sirens on its head. While its body is made out of organic veins, wizened old skin, and wires, which are spiralling on its torso and neck. Some theorise that the sirens aren't naturally appearing. Trevor Henderson also goes on to explain that Siren Head might be packed up with a loose cassette tape and tape recorder incorporated into its body. This may be the explanation of how Siren Head captures sounds of the victims and surrounding sounds which Siren Head replays as bait. On April 25th, 2020, Henderson released a statement on Twitter which goes to explain that Siren Head isn't a man-made creature and that Siren Head has the ability of imitating various human technology. Henderson also explained that Siren Head's appearance varies on whom is seeing it. People might see different versions of Siren Head, although the anatomy is always the same. The thin and skeletal frame with different heads, explaining the sightings of the so-called Lamp Head and the multi-head variation. Siren Head is a physical entity but its anatomy and existence are terrifying and meaningless to us. Siren Head isn't a being of our reality. Instead, Siren Head is much more distinguished than us, as it is not limited by our laws of nature. Basically, Siren Head is a constantly changing manifestation, which almost always appears different in the victim's view of Siren Head. The information changes all knowledge we have on Siren Head, which opens various theories about the creature. In the past, people theorised how can Siren Head have sirens even in the distant past before actual sirens were invented? If the laws of our nature, time and space don't apply to it, it is possible Siren Head may be a being of unlimited power all-knowing and able to move in any direction of the universe. However, these are all just speculations at the moment. Trevor has recently revealed many more facts about Siren Head. It is actually the static form of an unfathomable supernatural entity. Despite its lack of eyes, it can still see. It also has the ability to manipulate technology by playing sounds through other devices. It spends most of its time standing still, but it has the ability to move very fast. Victims of Siren Head have apparently been found with their eyes, eardrums, gums, sinuses, burst and bleeding, which ties in with its recent sighting where the majority of a population in a town was found dead in the same way. Possibly victims of Siren Head's ability to play loud sounds. Siren Head was never a person. People cannot turn into him by any means as well. Weapons do not normally work against it. It's almost never been spotted in largely populated areas. There have also been conflicting reports on whether Siren Head is a lone being or whether it is a species. Interestingly, Siren Head does not seem to acknowledge other animals. It seems only focused on humans for some reason. Here is a collection of sightings and encounters with Siren Head. 
While there are thought to be many more cases, these are the most popular and well known. 1978 Nine year old Catherine Hubbins goes missing from her home after she hears strange noises coming from the woods across from their family backyard. Her sister Abby is reported as saying that Catherine heard their mother calling to them from the trees, but wrong, all echoey. 1984 Four teenage friends go camping in the Allegheny National Park in Pennsylvania. After several days, the parents of one of the missing teenagers, Simon Foster, reports them as missing. Before a search party can be organised, Simon turns up on his family's doorstep, alone, claiming that something in the woods attacked him. Something huge. None of the other missing teenagers are ever recovered, though a sneaker thought to belong to one of the other boys, David Warwick, 16, was found by a hiker when it fell from the tallest branch of a tree one day in the spring of 1985. 1990. A ranger at the Kings Canyon National Park finds a man on one of his regular routes through the forest, a person still unidentified to this day. The man is clinging to a branch 20 feet up a giant sequoia tree and doesn't respond to any of the ranger's verbal commands. It isn't until the rescue operations were well underway that it was discovered that the man was dead, with many of the tissues, eardrums, eyes, in his face having ruptured. 1992 A drifter, Samantha Harp, claims to have seen something tall as a telephone pole striding through the trees, near a back road near New Hope, Pennsylvania. It was like one of the trees got up and started walking. The head was like a telephone pole, with speakers hanging off of it, and as it passed by, it sang like an old song from the radio. Now we know a bit more about Siren Head. But one question that pops up a lot, is Siren Head an SCP? The short answer is no. Alright, like and subscribe, see you in the next video. Just kidding. Siren Head was proposed to the SCP Foundation site as the non-canon SCP-6789, but it got removed by the Foundation and they stated that Siren Head is not an SCP. Any source implying Siren Head to be an SCP is false, since Trevor has stated himself that he wishes to keep Siren Head as his own separate work. SCP-5987 is named Siren Head, but it is about a figurehead of a French privateer brig. The captain of the aforementioned ship was titled 6789-AH, an obvious reference to SCP-6789. I hope that clears up some of the confusion about Siren Head being an SCP or not. What it really boils down to, in my opinion at least, is that Trevor Henderson wants to maintain some form of creative control over the character which he created, which is completely fair enough. And if it became an SCP, I feel like you lose some of that. SCPs are more of a joint collaborative effort, with lots of different writers combining together to create all these different SCPs which you can find on their website. It's really cool, and it's something I've started to explore more recently, and I'll be uploading some more videos on SCPs in the future, so if you're interested, stick around and subscribe. But when it comes to Siren Head, He's got his own identity, 
and Trevor's kind of created his own mythos with his own creatures which may or may not be aware of each other and I think it's cool to keep that a little bit separate from the SCP Foundation. But that's just my perspective, I could be wrong, and honestly, if he changes his mind and wants to make it an SCP, I don't mind either way. I just think it's cool what he's created, and it's awesome that so many people are interested in Siren Head. That's about it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Here's some footage of my little pup, Artemis, cosplaying as Siren Head. He had surgery recently and had to wear this poor cone on his head. He's doing better now though. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, support the channel, it really helps out. I've got some SCP videos I'm going to be posting on Thursdays, so keep an eye out for that and be sure to check them out. If no one watches them, I'll probably stop doing them. So if that's something you want to see, just be sure to support it. A massive thank you to my patrons who have shown awesome support to me. I really appreciate it, guys. My patrons have really motivated me to try making extra content for everyone. So they're the MVPs. And if you want to support me that little bit extra, go check out my Patreon. There are different tier levels you can pledge to and get some extra content from me, like creepypasta stories or line work scans and some other stuff. So check it out. But with that being said, I'll catch you guys next time in the next drawing video. I'll see you then. Bye.